Welcome back as we celebrate the life of entertainer Carlotta. Carlotta, you're 18 in 1962 when entrepreneur Lee Gordon invites you to perform in drag at a King's Cross club. You're petrified of the crowd, but after the first song, you're hooked and realise you are destined for the stage. But you need a more exotic name, and that becomes Carlotta in order of a Mexican princess. <laughs> The shows are so successful, the troupe moves to a club dedicated purely to drag shows. It's called Lay Girls, and you are its star. Co-stars at Lay Girls. Oh. <laughs> two of your co-stars are Karen Chant and Monique oh. Kelly. Can you join <laughs> us now. How about this girl? <laughs> I can't believe they keep secrets. <laughs> no, thank you, girls, for doing so. Karen, um, let, let me ask you, that, uh, is it true that, uh, that, that most of the patrons at Lay Girls had no idea that, of course, all these beautiful women were in fact men? Well, Mike, when we started in the 60s, I mean, people used to come to the club to look at these freaks, you know, men dressed as women. What is it all about? So after we'd done the show, we'd walk around the audience and people would say, oh, how are you? How about all these beautiful girls? How do they have these leotards cut up here, not a thing down here, and all this up here. I said, well, darling, when you've been in the business, what you do, you pull yourself in so tight down here, they have to pop up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Monique, uh, Carlotta wasn't always the star of the show, though, was she? No, not always. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We used to do late shows at Lay Girls at um, 1.30 in the morning and Carlotta was there very early, um, around about 7 o'clock, and uh, she got um, a bit tiddly winks on the old Chardonnay and uh, the finale came for uh, the late show and Carlotta had already, she wasn't in a seat so we presumed she was standing on stage waiting to go on and we all went out and did our little bit and turned around to present <laughs> and the curtain opened and here's Carlotta asleep in the shadow box. <laughs> curtain closed, we just kept doing the finale. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Oh, look, I'm getting feathers all over. Oh, Martin. look, you're all over the place. <laughs> Carlotta, you're such a hit by 1972. Television producers now invite you to appear in the top rating soap opera at number 96. <laughs> There isn't a particle of you that I don't love or, or want or remember. Uh, and you really don't mind me not being a girl? <laughs> oh, beg your pardon? <laughs> I, I'm not a girl. But, but you said you'd guessed. I, uh, I had guessed nothing of the sort. <laughs> Miss Ross. Uh, Mr. Ross? <laughs> <laughs> now you know why I never went into another soap. <laughs> By now, you've been living as a woman full-time for seven years, but still feel incomplete. So after months of harrowing psychological testing, doctors finally permit you to have Australia's very first publicly recognised sex change operation. And while many Australians are initially outraged by it, you couldn't be happier. I'm a girl, that's it. So I thought I may as well do something about it. And I went, I heard about surgery being done, but um, I'd seen a lot of operations done that weren't successful. And I wasn't going to have it done unless it was successful. So I waited. And, uh, I, and then I finally got it done and it's been very successful. Well, I'm happy anyway. <laughs> You're overjoyed with the results of the operation and finally feel a real woman. 
Your happiness is topped off when you fall in love for the first time. And he doesn't care what gender you are, does he? No. At the time. In 1976, you appear in a satirical drag pantomime based on Cinderella. I do, too. You play one of the ugly sisters. Your other stepsister joins us along with Cinderella and her wicked stepmother. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maggie Kirkpatrick, David Williams and Ronnie Arnold. <laughs> You must be joking. <laughs> 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 As I get you out of the blue mouth. Don't, don't you be, no bad news. <laughs> <laughs> no bad news. <laughs> 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 this woman. <laughs> uh, Mag, how did you get involved in Cinderella? Well, you might ask of a serious actor, Mike. <laughs> well, you might ask. <laughs> it seems that the... Uh, the uh, female illusionist who was cast as the other ugly sister had a bit of a hissy fit and took off somewhere, didn't she? So I was roped in to do this and I was worked like a dog by these two for about a week to learn all these routines. And of course, in a drag show, you have to mime. Well, that's completely foreign to me, as you can well see, as you can see. And so opening night came and all is da-da, 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 and the music's playing and I forgot, my mouth was firmly closed. For once, my mouth was firmly closed. And this one, in a very loud stage whisper, said, Mime, you stupid bitch, mime! <laughs> As Cinderella, you used to play tricks on the audience, didn't you? Well, I began to say, OK, I'll give you a minty if you can tell me which of my ugly sisters was born a man and which was born a woman. And, of course, they always got it wrong. They always picked Maggie. <laughs> They always pick Maggie as the man and Carlotta as the girl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can't win them all, mate. No. <laughs> Ronnie, yeah, Carlotta has always been a great storyteller, hasn't she? Well, there was one story in particular that she told, and it was about a drag queen who had a silicon uh, implant in her breast. And um, the, in those days, they used to stick the needle under this flesh. Uh, not like today where they do it the bags, okay. She was told when, not to drink and when she goes to bed to lie flat on her back. Well, uh, <laughs> she was so excited by the silicon implant, she had a few drinks. Then she had a few more drinks and then she got really rotten and she passed out. Uh, when she woke up the next morning, the breasts were underneath the armpit <laughs> and she had a goiter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think it was the same class. I don't know. Oh, 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 darling. Thank you for coming down. <laughs> Carlotta, in your mid 30s, you jump at the chance to travel to London and appear in the drag review called You'll Never Believe It. The stage shows are total sellouts, but despite their success, you're not happy and head home. On your return, you and your partner exchange vows and you settle down to life as a suburban housewife. Mm -hmm. But you're not out of the spotlight for long before accepting an invitation to tour New Zealand with Lay Girls in 1987. But the strain of work and the fact that you can never have children finally tear you and your man apart, your great love. Because you've always desperately wanted to be a parent, haven't you? I just adore kids. I think they're the greatest asset on earth. Uh, I, his brother came to Australia and he had kids, so I decided that, uh, look, he should have kids too. So I walked out on the relationship. It's 1996, you're 52, and recruit five drag queens for your own touring stage show called Carlotta and Her Beautiful Boys. The tour kicks off in Sydney before you head for the outback, and thousands of Aussies relish your unique brand of glamour. The next year, you're invited to join the TV panel show Beauty and the Beast. Your life experience makes you a crucial member of the team and hundreds of confused and scared viewers write to you for advice. Thanks to the popularity of the show, you now enjoy renewed fame. And here tonight are Beast Stan Zamanik and Beauty's Jeannie Little and Prue McSween. <laughs> Stan, it must have been very difficult or different for you to be working with a beauty who changed his sex. Well, I've got to tell you, for the whole time she was on the program, I kept on asking her the one question. 
is it still in the pickle jar? <laughs> you wanted now, to borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a penis extension. <laughs> he was mesmerised. <laughs> yeah, because, so. Jeannie, you were forever... Um, trying to outdo each other in outfits. As she going, I went to Lake Girls when I was 15 and, and, and truly and honestly, I just thought all that glamour, all those gorgeous rhinestones, sequins, feathers and everything. So when Carlotta joined the, the show, uh, Beauty and the Beast, I thought I've got to be over the top and everything more and more. There's going to be so much glamour with Carlotta. So she came in with her hair in a smart bob and a corporate <laughs> jacket and I ended up being the drag queen. <laughs> And Prue, you, you met Carlotta when you were on the show. That's when you first met her. Yes, Beauty we became, and the Beast. Yeah, we became great friends. In fact, I made a big mistake though. Once she said to me, I'll do your makeup. We were going somewhere and she said, I'll do your makeup. And I ended up looking more like a drag queen than anyone <laughs> I've ever met. <laughs> Thanks for all coming in. Thank Pretty you. Great. You're gorgeous, you look stunning. Thank you.